somebody to write the book about African time. No offense to anybody. Um, I actually got an author in the house tonight. Uh, let's just say hello to everybody here quickly, quickly. Karabu Madia, who's written a beautiful book called uh, I Hate Women Empowerment. Don't let the title fool you. Karabu, thank you for being here tonight, sir. Precious Nyarambi, Breaking Forth, thank you so much for being here, Precious. Kim Hunter from Tango with Text, our resident blogger. Guys, this has been live streamed, so if anybody has any objections, speak now or forever hold your peace. Because it's going nationwide and worldwide. Oh yes, this is how we do it at Scoops. Um, no, Maydeen, thank you so much for getting Nono up with her book and her banners today. I really appreciate all the support you've done with our authors as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, guys, we've done 120 African authors in the last 14 months. Yep. That is what we do at Scoots. We look after our own. We are here to support our own. Um, please like our Facebook page. You can buy the book, let Nona sign it, you can pay for it downstairs and win us. You're not here just to party tonight, no. You're here to buy the book. And this is the reason you are here tonight, to celebrate an author that has taken me 10 months working with her to get this to fruition. Um, Nona walked inside and we were just talking about books. And she, those of you that know her, has, she has this presence about her. And she calmly told me what she wanted to do. And I said, well, you know, we don't have a vernacular shelf in the shop. And I would like to really have her as the first vernacular Zulu book in Scoops. And she went, oh, no, good right. This is not gonna happen. No girlfriend. And I said, why not? And calmly we went on a very, very soulful journey together to get to this point this evening. And it's been an absolute joy to have her in my life. She comes up to me, she comes into the store, and it's like a calmness between the two of us. And we talk very deeply about literature. Um, and those of you that know her, know that she is that way inclined. She articulates so beautifully in English. And when she started speaking and prosing her poetry me in Zulu, she hypnotized me. <laughs> totally hypnotized me. Last week she came up, I was so tired, I was lying on my desk, and she went, Mama, and I said, just stand here with me. And she was rubbing my back because my back was sore. And she was speaking, she was, she took her book and she was speaking to, she was translating it for me from Zulu to English in a heartbeat as fluent as a butterfly. And she was prosing and I felt myself go into the zone of Zen, of oneness and consciousness while she was, and so she was holding the book and rubbing my back, and she was, I was, again, went into a in hypnotic state, and I, then I hear a voice go, are you still with me, reader? <laughs> and I'm going, carry on, and I thought, I want you to go home early tonight, but I can't get away from this. I don't want to get away from this, I want to be absolutely involved in this. And she carried on, and if, I had, if we hadn't stopped, she would have probably have read the entire book to me and translated the entire book to me. And five minutes and it was like, are you still with me, reader? And when I went home, I thought, wow, what just happened? And I'm not just saying this to blow her bubble. Absolutely not. She has that ability with people. We didn't stop there. We went downstairs and we were saying goodbye and we spent another hour standing outside here. <laughs> talking. I also want to thank Vernon, who 
has become a friend of mine too. Um, and the two of them together with myself have embarked on a beautiful friendship and I want to thank Vernon, who's not going to be saying anything tonight, unfortunately, <laughs> for standing right beside Nono to get this book to this evening. I'm not on the program, dear Gracie's. I'm not on the program. <laughs> no, no. I'm so proud of you. I am so super proud of you for taking that final step into bringing this to yourself, not just to Scoobs, to bring it to young readers that need people and leaders like you in this country. You are going only one way, and that is right to the very top. And I want to congratulate you tonight and say thank you, thank you, thank you. So without any further ado, because I can't wait for this, I'm going to hand you over to your MC for this evening, Mr. Zanina Zulu. Yes, please. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Let's give a round of applause for her one more time. Um, I think she's just an amazing speaker. Eh? Uh, no, you are. Trust me. You spoke so well. Uh, you nearly made it cry. So that's how we judge speakers, by the way. If they can't make people cry, then I know they're questionable. Uh, I'm joking. Anyways, my name is Sunny and my surname is Zulu. I'm going to be a program director for the night. Um, there's a quote in the Bible that says, uh, Blessed are the shortest in speech, they shall be invited back again. <laughs> so, so, so that you invite me back again, I'm, I'm going to make sure I don't become like that uncle of the program director that talks and talks and talks and talks. Um, but we're going to move right along. So I think it, there's no better way to open up the program um, than to open it with a poem. Um, actually, let me speak Zulu a bit. You know, I was like, I was checking out this book, man, and then I saw a word written, Gipikelele. How many of you are Zulu here? Raise your hands. Please don't say obvious. Like, like, we can't assume that you are all Zulu because you are here. You know, how many of you are Zulu? Raise your hands. Okay. So when was the last time you heard a word, like that word? When was the last time? Anyone wants to just... Okay, just now. Ne? Before this, before this, you can't remember, right? So it's here in this book, like, you know, like now what you ask is, where, where are you heading to? You know, like, that would be, oh, what's your vision? That would be the question, right? Like, in my book, I've got a book as well, like, I'm sure I speak about vision, like, vision. Like, imagine some child, because that's where I'm from, you know, I can try to say, read my book, but the poor child won't understand really what vision is up until you break it down. But if you've got books like this, so I would really like for us to give her a big round of applause for just taking pride in our own country. You know? It's a true design. Well done, trust me. Um, if we're in another environment, I would say you've got, yeah, 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 you've got something. You know? But anyways, let's start with the poem. Um, I'm going to allow, um, it's Ta Tandek. Right, I, I said I'll call it Tandega the Poet. So if you can give a round of applause for Tandega the Poet. San Munani. Good evening, everyone. I'm um, not rendering a poem. Genza in God. No, I just need it, yeah. Um, what a privilege and an honor to be here. And I was telling Mrs. Nondo, obviously she came at the right time in my life because I have a serious interest in Zulu literature. It's like the best thing that has ever happened to me. I'm Kosa, by the way, but I love the Sizu. Like my poem is, O Tanjo Nuwaba, in God Yam. Nani isi dalwa isi menandaba nomta yuwasu. Godwa indalo ya kuya igwenza gubenzima uguti na kubwe. Nani pila nje impile emnandi godwa nga pangati gimi nga ngazo kuti nyam dingo menziwa. Ekjule nguwe nizi yoyam nga ngazo kuti nitingu tani no tula umdula wokukwa. 
Mshalo figa utando lwa kogimi. Ngase mfana ni mkosgazi ya sesa maria. Hebi ngatando wa umutu. Kwa tuwa pela, isanda sako asikunyezi ugu wa sendizi. Utando lwa kufuti, lunga ngolo wajibu. Lutulile lwa figa gimi la ngenza istando. Na mshalo wa uwa umutu ngoba wangu tanda wena, nyinga zitanda nga nami. Nga ni tanda inda lo yako mkaba nguti izo guazi kukumtogo zizo, kukumtogo zo kuru kukela kwe. Na msaje, ukoba ikanda lami nga mafuta inda beya miya kikrima, ikikrimi nga zimulo ya. Utando lwa kolu nyeze nga ba uwe sifaza anu ozi tanda yofuti, ozi nagigilani. Na msaje, wangu tata nga sala nawe gwe sogu nene siga mpulungu. Mwaba pelao utando luwako, lunga wangu luwajibu. Ngangifana no niko dima, hunge kongfunayo, mwaba pelao nangu tatimali yendela. Goto wage, utando luwako, lunga wangu luwajibu. Futi sandla sako, asfinye ziu kubasindis. Samu finyelela nami, washala nami, uwaja nami, matogoza. Ngangi usa ule, nina zwani ga, hena banda batanda yewe, nafuta bakonza yewe. Kodwa ngobu tando lwa kulu pezu kwa kukoku konda kwa wangu tanda na mwangi pika melisha na msanje nibizu wa mguti mpaulu. Na msanje nimile futu uwena okwazi ugu mmisa nga manja pambi kwako ngukulu kutogoza. Okwazi ugu mlinda ugu tinginga awi ngukulu kutogoza. Ugu mlindi wami kutogoza wami. Mvumele ngiti uyisitunzi sami. Guys, let's give a proper round of applause. Yeah. First, I tell you that it, it's not everyone that can be a poet. Uh, you know, like some of us, you know. If I can tell you my story, I've tried to be a musician. You know, if I tell you how many times I've been to idols, you'll think, yeah, what do you think? And don't ask me what happened because I'm here. I mean, Kaya is Kaya and when I'm here. So to, as I remember the one time I went to Idols, I didn't even tell anyone at home because I'd been there so many times, you know, and then I was like, you know what, tonight, man, that's not going to tell anyone. I'm just going to pop in and I know with my faith I'm going to win tonight, you know. So anyways, you know, that day, actually, let me not talk about Idols, actually, it's very, very painful. You know, I'm inspired by your poem um, and welcome to our new guest, uh, the ones that have just walked in, we see. Uh, the late comers, hallelujah. <laughs> moving right along, moving right along. Um, is Miss Linda here? Okay, Miss Linda is here. Miss Linda is a member of parliament, uh, chairperson of the Education Portfolio Committee in the KZN legislature. I'd like for us to give a round of applause as well. Welcome, Miss Linda. director. <laughs> Mr. Zoom for introducing me and for welcoming me in the manner in which you have done. I firstly want to honor the Holy Spirit in this place. I also want to honor the species family, in particular Umam Kulu, who has allowed me to travel and come here and speak what is in the heart of the Father. I also want to honor the Zuma family who have raised Nodomego to become what she is today, a very influential African woman in the making. We want to ask God for everyone who has taken time just to come and celebrate these achievements. Nowadays, we spend more time crying and burying and burying. You know, mourning because people have not really found themselves in the Father's house. Because for us, what is important is to find yourself in the Father's house. I battled to write a speech, and I eventually did, and unfortunately, the speech is missing. So I don't have a speech. <laughs> and I, Makeba, I'm a, I'm a rally person. I address rallies. And in the rallies, we are, around, we are allowed to just to say rhetoric. And so you hardly me in advance. And we just talk about Amanda, you know, you come with all these new terms, radical economy, don't do, and radical writing tonight. Just two things that the spirit dropped when I was praying, I passed on Twitter about after three, 
And I said exactly what is it that you want me to say and what are the points of emphasis? And she says to me as the spirit leads. And suddenly the spirit said to me there are two important words that you need to relay with whoever is, has come across or has encountered the life of Nontobe because those two are very imperative. They've made Nontobe. The first one is that Nontobe is a young girl at Alex young girl in Fufuem uh, Kuse in the north of Kwazulu-Natal. She was forever uh, inquisitive. Her spirit and her mind was forever looking for something. And I'm glad that she found the thing before she departed. I heard a story yesterday, a man saying, we all have to empty our suitcases. We can't go back home with the suitcases, loads of goodies and the joys and all the things that the good father has endowed upon us because seated there you are endowed. That's the first way. The way it was a inquisitive mind. It's the non or the late because non lived before and he di she died and there arose another non. So I'm now talking about the risen non. The late non had her characters and unfortunately, they don't di just die at once. Some are you know, have to cross over because once you find your context where you stand in life, you can't discuss, discard the past and history. You have got to make history and your past the point of reference. So God said to me, I'm just reminding you about a few things. When you were there at Eastwood and she was there, young girl going to, to Alex, her spirit is inquisitive and that character did not die. That character lives with her. She's still inquisitive. That is why she's written for all of us in Isi Zulu because it is not Zulu. It is in Isi Zulu for all of us to read as Africans and South Africans. And the spirit of the Lord said to me again, the other character of the, of the Nondo that died and the nondo that rose with, with the spirit of the Father, the nondo that was risen by Jesus Christ, the resurrected nondo, is the woman with the mind of a bulldozer. And he made me to go back to the book of Esther, and he was like helping me to navigate through the character of Ruth, of Esther, of Deborah, and all other strong characters in the Bible. And he said to me, those characters did not die. And you want to appreciate your family for nurturing you in the manner in which they've died. Most of the time, we don't appreciate when our parents rebuke us. And the Bible says, do not, do not uh, underestimate and do not be bitter when the elderly rebuke you. Do not be angry. So Nandomego is one of the few that really did not get so angry when she was rebuked. Think about yourself if you did not allow God to rebuke you. So I'm glad that you found him before you find yourself. Because when I read that book, I read it through this afternoon. Just I spent about a few minutes and I read and I made my conclusion and my analysis. And I realized that you are channeling all Africans into the upward trajectory. And you are taking that because it's a mention that God has given unto you to speak to Africa. But one very strong point about Nundo Bego, as I was talking to the spirit, he says to me, he's got a, a prophetic anointing that is really misunderstood by many people. He's got a vision that is overwhelming. And some people, Nundo Bego, will not understand you. But I pray that the Almighty God will help you to understand that you are now have risen as a lion, a lioness in Africa to speak to Africa. I like the fact that you have chosen to write in Isuzu because that language, all our African languages are being dealt with either by the current regime or the previous regime, but we've not been able as South Africans to be honest to the call that God has called us as South Africa to build each other. We are a nation that was, you know, taken to the mountain top and now we've created and invented things like hashtag so and so must fall. 
because we are in the mountain. And I do want to bless God that you are going to help your peers and even us who are a bit older than you and even influence the younger generation to find themselves, to know where they stand and who they are and where they are going. Because the problems that you see in South Africa are created by men. People that don't, do not know their roles in society. So I'm glad that you find yourself a role and you've come to self a niche market. Nobody's going to contest you. Nobody's going to write you next to that pen when you put it on the paper. It's going to amaze you. It's going to go to nations. I'm telling you, this book is going to take Africa by storm because you are not just a South African. We are African of a kind. And I like the fact that you have been speaking to me about Africa. At times, not they will wake me up with dreams and visions and we start to declare scriptures over uh, Africa, over South Africa, and we say to the Father, please raise an army of God that is going to restore your people in our generation because we really desire that Africa belongs to the Africans. We don't want to be the half owners of Africa. So I'm glad that you've influenced my life also to pray. I used to pray, but I was never, you know, I was not very strong in praying for Africa and praying for the nations of this earth. And God says, ask of me of nations I'll give to you as inheritance. And I thank you that you have raised that mental, that ability for all of us, even your family. I bless God for the 6 p.m. prayers that you never took them for granted because that is what is the backbone of any other person. If you can't recall your parents telling you that this is done and this is not done, I pity you. I really pity you because it means in that suitcase there's something that your parents shelf for you and when they die, that's why people cry a lot. I used to ask myself, why do people cry a lot eh, in funerals? Why do they cry and they don't cry when people are sick? They cry a lot and it's a kind of a show crying. They even take saucers, just, you know, a sort of a cup so that they receive the tears. It is a show crying. That's a hypocritic kind of a cry. Because you know if you cry to the father, you cry the tears are inside. Because the mother and the father, they've got to empty themselves. They've got to empty everything that God deposited in your lives for your generations. So I'm challenging each and every one of us here that do find your purpose in life, know who you are, where you're going, what are you all about. The, the reason we're fighting in South Africa in particular is Africans because, the, 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 you know, the bottom ladder, the, it's very clouded. And so there's a scrap of resources. And you really have got to find your, your passion and your calling to go to the mountaintop. And God is faithful to help each and every one of us here find our role and our call. I read that book, it talks a lot about call, something that you do with all love, zeal, earnest, and it doesn't really worry you. What I'm doing today, I can do 24 hours. The only thing I don't take is the invoice. Because I am working and so I'm a servant of the people. But what I'm doing really excites my spirit because then I, I have an opportunity to blend and understand the heart of the Father about people that I've got to talk to. In closing, I want to say, Nondobego, there are just two other things, you know, as I was trying to read and understand a lot about Nondobego. God said to me, Nondobo has got a, a rare anointing, a prophetic action, but she also has, in her hands, she is a molder, a builder of nations. So I'm, I'm saying to all of you, those who have come across Nondobe, when those who will come in the next generations, do not take her for granted. Dynamites come in small packages. As little as she may, you know, appear and come to all of us, but she's actually not small. I've realized because of the impact in my own life, the people I've referred to her, everyone that has come across Nondobe, She's got a rare and a special anointing. She pushes you 
and she makes you to understand that in your womb there are things that you've got to give to birth. She's an African midwife. So I want to thank God just for these few minutes to talk. There is a lot of us share about our journey together, but I do want to make a point and say we all need to pray for Africa. At least black people must pray like never before. I've got friends from across uh, Africa, East, West, uh, Central Africa. When I go and visit them, they cry all the time. And I ask them, why do you cry? We don't cry in South Africa. We don't waste water. We don't waste our tears. Why are you crying? They say, no, because we have not seen wars. We live in wars. In Uganda, in Ghana, in DRC, Africa is ravaged by wars. But why are we fighting? We have not found our role in our purpose and our calling. And we are too crowded there. At the bottom, there, it's cloudy. Please rise up. Africa must arise. Somebody must say, when we say, we are talking about you. We are not talking about the horn in its literal sense. We are talking about you. All of you are horns. And God is going to use each and every one of you here to anoint the next person. Do not be greedy. When you have something that you've been given as a gift, please pass it to the next person. Because when you die, Dr. Malins Munro say we all must die empty. Thank you very much, sir. May the good Lord bless you. Yeah. Yeah, ne? Uh, there's a word that they call it the, the word of greatness. It says wow. You know, only great people know that when, when something good happens, you say wow. So let's just say wow together. One, two, three. Wow. I thought that was really wow. And uh, two things I'm thinking as she's speaking is that um, people at the back, we love you as well. Ne? We see you. You know, uh, like, like in high school, you know, like the ones who sit at the back. But no, we're not in high school, so we love you guys. Ne? We know you're not those ones, so we love you. I see not those brothers there, you know. Uh, were they always sitting at the back of that school? Uh, I'm so abused. No, but, uh, but, uh, but we see you guys. Two things that's just speaking that I'm thinking of is that, you know, there's nothing as powerful as seeing women working together. You know, like I'm looking at the audience, I'm seeing how it's like more females in the room. And, you know, when women work together, can I make an example of business? It's like business. It's like having a business partner. Right? If it works well, it works really, really well. If it doesn't work, it's like bad, bad, bad. You know. So I always say that with women as well. When you guys like stay together, you know, you become this beautiful, strong. You become the mbogoto that you are. You know. And then of course some others think that you guys hate each other. I don't believe that. You know. I think you guys love each other. You know. It's just different personalities sometimes. You know. But when you guys are like this solid. The second thing, guys, that I just thought about is that if not you, then who? If not now, then when? You know, I'm inspired by that to say, if you don't get inspired today, then when are you going to be inspired? If you don't open up yourself to learning, to starting something, and some of you might have dreams and goals. I don't want to ask you how many have got dreams and goals, you know, but let the story of Nontobe inspire you today to say, if there's been a book, there's been a project you've been thinking about, I say that there's, in life there's two kinds of people. There's people that think and think, and there's people that think and do. Right? So, I'm not going to say which ones you are, but I'd like to say non Tobago most probably is the latter. She thinks, and then she does. You know, but moving right along, um, I'm going to invite our next speaker. Um, it's Ms. Nogulungan Nono Tele Undosi. Let's give her a round of applause. More like a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Sister Inda, thank you so much. What you shared it resonated with me so much. Uh, my name is Nogulunga Nolotele, and I'm so excited to be here today for many reasons. I'm a bit emotional as well. Unonto is a dear friend of mine and sister. We met many years ago at Simunye Lodge when she was working there. I started television production. It was my first production ever. I was shooting with the BBC as an intern. And then, lo and behold, I was praying for an opportunity. And the opportunity came. It was an internship for two months. And we were shooting at Simunye Lodge. And I met this amazing 
wonderful person, Nonto. And she, after, after we finished shooting, she would invite me to her room and we would just sit there and talk and dream, you know? And she said to me, no, no, where do you want to be? What's your dream? So that's what I want to share about today. I, didn't, I also didn't come up with a speech. I just wanted to speak from my heart because of what she's deposited in my life. Unonto has always been that friend that cheered me on to seek my purpose, to find my purpose. She never allowed me to rest beneath my potential. Yes, we both believe in God. Yes, we both pray, but she always urged me, listen, you've got to maximize your potential. You've got to find your purpose, what it is you are here for. And we all need a friend like that. We all need a sister like that because it is so easy to rest beneath our potential. It is so easy to be mediocre, to blend in. It is so easy to just say, I'm doing okay. But what, it, what is it that you are here for? Why aren't you giving it your best? If not your best, why not? Unoto has consistently cheered me on. Um, when I moved from KZN to Johannesburg, I came and I worked for multi-choice, male-dominated male industry, and we still kept in touch. And I'd say to her, oh my gosh, it is so difficult here. And she'd be like, no, no, it's not. You are meant to be there. Do what it is that you are meant to do there. Finish your assignment there. And that opened my eyes because it brought me to a new way of thinking. That it's not just about me. It's not just about my career. But what is my purpose here? What is it that I'm supposed to be imparting with these people that God has allowed me to be surrounded by? So my thinking changed. And from that, I've been able to do things that I, I never imagined. And at a young age, I'm able to walk into boardrooms and make, and make decisions purely because God has allowed me to have the kind of friends who help me to see beyond just my career, beyond just my well-being. What is, it, what is it that I'm here for? What is my purpose? What am I serving? It is not about my paycheck. I want to earn 30,000 rand. But what, it, what, what wisdom am I imparting? What role am I playing? And from that, I leave the workplace fulfilled in everything that I do. I know that there's a bigger assignment than just the paycheck, than just the invoice. And no, no thank you for changing my mindset. Thank you for being God's mouthpiece because you've consistently spoken and confirmed the word of God to me over and over again. You're the one person I can wake up at midnight at one o'clock in the morning and say, listen, we need to pray about this. And we need people like that in this world. We need people who will stand on the word of God and not be shaken and not be moved. Thank you for allowing me to also grow in our friendship. Because that's another thing she's very good at. We, we grow each other. You don't just, you don't come into my life and you stay the way that you were. No, 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 friend, we need to upgrade each other. And that's one thing we, need, we really need to do as females. We need not be scared of uh, criticism. Let's empower each other, let's teach each other. When you do that, this is actually how it makes me feel. That's education, that's empowerment, that's understanding. Not, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just said that to me. No. Help me to be better. Help me to be better. Let's empower each other. Let's make it a positive influence on each other's lives. And that's what today is about. And Nondo, I just want to say, before I sit down, that I celebrate the woman that you are. When you turn your back, I don't need to worry about who you are when you're not in my presence. I know exactly who you are. Thank you for loving me, the true definition of love. I've never met someone who loves me as much as you do. You love me without any boundaries. And you can call me into order at the same time and not make me feel condemned. Thank you. Thank you. That's why today I can stand here and just be in awe because I know you from then and I see what God is doing in your life. And how can I not give God glory? Thank you for imparting so much wisdom with me. Thank you for being patient with me and teaching me things that I was not aware of, things that I did not know. Thank you for sitting me down when I needed to be sat down. Thank you for speaking life into me when I wanted to give up. 
Thank you for not allowing me to give up on my purpose, for reminding me that I've got a calling on my life. We need people like that. Let's not give up on each other. There's a bigger purpose. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, wow, once again. Um, when you want to speak, you know what I get. Okulu Sugangan, so I'm from one Nongoma, guys. Nongoma is like a. Uh, how many of you know where Nongoma is? A few, yeah? Not everyone. But it's like, yeah, there, yeah. It's like in the bundles, yeah? Don't see me wearing suits. If I can tell you my story, you know that, like, uh, you, you'll never know my story if you don't know my. Like, like, some, like someone is asking me, Sarah, where is that verse that you were saying, blessed are the short sentence speech, because I want to give it to my pastor. You know, like someone sent me an SMS, read your Bible, you'll find it. Uh, let me try, let me try to you guys. Guys, we see you as well there. Uh, we love you. you. You mean a lot to us. You know, uh, follow me on Twitter as well. <laughs> At I am Sane I promise I'll follow back. I'm not like them. You know, you know like the others that say you must follow and then they don't follow back. What's the hashtag? Can we say hashtag is tunes? Sami, if you want to tweet, let's just say hashtag is tunes Sami. You know, who knows? Maybe this might be turned into a, 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 a drama. There's a drama series called this tunes, isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's say it's tunes Sami. Let's not make them popular. Hashtag is tunes Sami. And then that's the tweet for tonight. Let me try poetry, guys. I, like I told you, I nearly became a poet. Um, the one thing that I found interesting when I was, um, you know, in pursuit of my other gifts you know, like being in idols and never making it, was that uh, I realized that in poetry, so for example, I can just make a poem with any name or any word. Give me a word, yes, sir. Any word, anyone? In Jabul. Okay. You said in Jabul, right? Okay, so this is, you'll forgive me, no? Comrade, I love you. This is our poet. This is our professional poet. This is like, you know, junior poet. But uh, junior will do very well. So in Jabul. In Jabulo. In Jabulo, Magi Yika Bangagi Ya Jabula. And the most interesting thing is that by the time they repeat the words, they don't know what's next. Giya Jabula. Bula. Bula. O Mangi Kabanga Jeng and Jabulo Engi Yinikwa. A bantu bo demiwami. Gi kabanga ukuti. 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 Best and give on our booty, I'm still on Jay in Jabulo and getting our imperium, but meeting a band to English was it? Oku P. Lisana Nabo 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 Nabo. Give me another word, guys. Come on, I'm stuck here. Another word, another word, a quick one, another word. Anyone? Banga, Nga, way. And by the way, guys, the words, I mean, the, the hands. Trust me, they do work with you right now. As you are seeing the hands, you are thinking, you father! Eh? <laughs> utando. Ngoba utando abu siyona nje into yase mkhabeli, but utando into yase zulwini. 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 Ngoba angisho, unkulunkulu maiti ngi ya kutanda. Wati nga kutanda. You know what Moving right along, moving right along. Are you guys still good? Are you inspired? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to listen to you guys up. I saw the was from Kala. No, I think they, you know, make up your, yeah, but don't know how to break. We'll get there. Is Miss Karen here? No? Okay, cool. Let's go to Dr. Reginald. Is Doctor here? Okay. Dr. Reginald. Is Chima? Okay, Dr. Reginald Chima. Uh, regional Ch uh, Chima, Regional Monitoring and Evaluation at United Nations Population Fund. Asim Mamugele Ngezanta Bagaiti. I have a few words, very few words. 
Um, you see, I understand this young woman. I can say I know her. The Bible says clearly in the book of Samuel, first Samuel, it says God is the one who lifts the poor from the dust and raises them from the dumb hill and stands them that they may stand among princes. Because the pillars of the earth, what makes the earth stand, belongs to the God of the poor. When I came to South Africa in 2009, I came as a UN diplomat. I came unknown and noticed. And I remain unknown and unnoticed. I found her in the presence of God. Because I'm also like a man like her. I'm a, I'm a man that has the same spirit as her. I'm an obscure man. I'm, just, I'm, not, a, I'm not a loud man. Because I come from history. I come from Nigeria. I come from Biafra. And I was two years old when the Biafra war began. I entered the war with my mother. My father was conscripted in the army. I came out from the war seven years old in Nigeria. There was no hope. Our home was bombed and destroyed. There was no water to drink. We drank from the rain that fell from the heavens. Anyone who drank from the stream was going to die because of cholera. There were dead bodies in the rivers and the streams, so we couldn't drink. There was no food to eat. We ate lizards and grasshoppers, whatever we could find to survive. There was no road to my village. There was no light to get to the place. It was in the middle of the forest, in the middle of nowhere. There was no hope for the beginning. Every child of my age at that time died of Pashioko in Biafra. Six of us in my village survived. When we got to elementary school, I remember our first day in elementary one with my school teacher, a woman, she's alive still. I began to mention one under a flower tree with a chalkboard nailed to the tree, naked, sitting under the sun, with mosquitoes having their, you know, feel on the back. I came from nowhere. And today, I'm 52 years old. I have my doctorate degree in economics at the age of 27. I have five degrees. I have an MBA from London. I have my post MBA from Harvard Business School. I have traveled this worldwide. I've been 20 years serving humanity in the United Nations, visiting all countries in Africa and all great nations in this world. I have friends all over. I used to be poor because I had nothing. But now I'm rich because I have Christ. I tell you, in this story, you know, it, it sounds like a poem that someone like me would stand in front of you. Because I was, there were no books, there were no teachers because they died in the war. So there was hopelessness. So when I, when I go back to my Bible and I look at that scripture, which I read to you, and I want to give it to you directly. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 7. I carry it with me like, like an anthem. Verse 7 says, The Lord make it poor and make it rich. He bring it low and lift it up. He raised the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the downhill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he had set the world 
upon them. In verse 9 it says, He will keep the feet of his saints, one of whom is Nomto, and the wicked shall be silent in wickedness, in darkness. For, this, for by strength shall no man prevail. So I, I, I share my short testimony with you. Because we appear to all come from the same history and story in South Africa. A beginning that has no record. A beginning that, has, that cannot be traced. We have arrived at a square in this earth, in this world, where we've assumed a different identity because the pillars of the earth belong to this same God. When I met Nonto, a young woman fervent in the spirit, among all the brethren I met in South Africa, she was very unique. She was, de she was determined not to achieve things by the deed of strength, but by the inspiration of the Almighty. So she was like me. I had no uncle to rely on. For those who have uncles, who can lift them up. I had no, I had no friends. I didn't get scholarship from anybody, man or spirit. I had no help. At times I was rejected and turned down. I had no fallback, nowhere to go. So all I had was Jesus Christ. I had to fall on to Jesus at the age of 14. And that day was in the bush as I was leading out my sheep. Because I was a shepherd boy. I recall that day in the evening, the evening sun was upon me, and I, and, I, and, I, and I held this small palm tree, and I looked into the heavens, and I said, oh God, if you will help me, I will serve you for the rest of my life. I was still in elementary school. There was no road to the city. There were no vehicles. I'll come back to you. But today, it's a different story. It's a phenomenal story because that's what Nonto represents. When she wrote her book, for me it was a testimony of, of something beyond her. But the courage to write that book is something I was wondering where did she come from? Where she get this from? It's not normal. And then she was translating the book. I'm moving forward with it. I said, what is in this book? Because if there's nothing in this book, there will be no inspiration to translate, to move it forward. I've read books in my life. However, now my wife is a doctor, is a surgeon, and we have both read books that can fill a whole warehouse. But I know when a book is inspired. She wrote this book out of nothing, without any man's support or help. It's her story, really. But I know beyond this that this book will, it will help anyone that needs help. It will help anyone that needs help. Young women, because I meet many of them these days you know, in South Africa, who feel there's no one to help them. Young boys that have no job, who feel there's no one to help them. But not to have set in motion a standard. But it is possible that your story of nothingness can become the locomotive that will drive a child that came from nowhere to become someone under the sun. She is a child of God, fearless, full of strong, impeccable character, respectful, and we respect her. We respect her. We know who she is. Not because she was man-made or born of a woman, but because there's something inside her that makes a difference. I stand with her many times when she comes home. I look into her eyes, you see the flame of fire, you know. And I know that when God lifts a child out of the dunghill, out of the dust, look into the eyes of the child, you will read it, you will see who she is. You will see? 
You will see. You will see. Not unto is precious. Precious to the kingdom of God and to those of us who serve Christ. Precious to those of us who have come to depend on nothing in this world but this in God. Precious to those who have need of evolution. We want to find a space and a place in this world. It's a crowded world, friends. Very crowded. Very crowded. What do you think you know? Someone knew it before you were born. What did you trying to invent? Somebody invented it before you started. So where do you begin? It's only by that inspiration that she has. She dares everything. Sometimes I ponder, I say, what, where, where is she going? There is a God in Nanto, which I recommend to everyone in this place. There is a spirit in Nanto, which I recommend to everyone in this place. You don't get it by academics. I read all the books in this world, the professor of economics. You don't get it by clapping your hands and throwing your hands in the air and giving up. You don't get it by walking around and looking for the next opportunity. You get it by a firm, personal decision that is unshaken. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that help can come from nowhere. And even the little help that appears in the, in, the, in the horizon is like a small reed in the ocean. You can't hold on it. And yet you keep lifting. She is a blessing to our universe. There are few like her. I've traveled this world around, I'm not boasting. There are very few like her. Who depend on this same spirit that I saw in my childhood. To rise like a mountain under the sea. She's a wealthy spirit. She's very wealthy. Extremely wealthy spirit. Do you want to be wealthy? Look into her life and just see what the difference it is. She's wealthy. She's powerful. She's powerful. She's powerful because her voice is heard. Among her peers, among her the young ones, she has direction. She has complete direction. She has a way. Are you, have you lost your direction? Find none to. Find none to. Find none to. She has so much giving in her life. So much giving. Not just ethnic money or cash and food and bread. Kind words that bring forth genuine change in people's lives. You only need that kind of work to find a way in the midst of darkness. There are few that can give this kind of words. Above all, she's beautiful. She's extremely beautiful. She is the desire of every man that wants genuine, true womanhood by his side. I'm married 21 years in marriage, moving ahead with my three children. I know the good ones when I see them. I know the excellent ones when I see them. Nanto is a specimen of a creature, rarely found around our universe. Rarely found around our horizon. We love her. We appreciate her. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to listen to me. I want to say may God bless you. May the God that brought me out of Biafra bring you out of whatever challenge you have in your life. Biafra is still there struggling. It's in the news these days. But I was there two years old when it began. Came out of the war in 1971. Seven years old, naked. But today I'm so clothed, I can't find space for my body to wear on my clothes. I wish you well. Don't let her go away. Make a friend. And make God bless you. This is the part where we say, wow. Really, 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 wow. I don't know how to translate that. But Okay, in English it's he who has, yes, he must hear. 
Is that the right one? Check for me, guys. Come on, I translated it. You know? People who have ears must hear. So um, there's another quote that says, uh, the, wise, the wise listen, fools speak. So I would say that we are the wise ones, you know, we're listening to such wisdom. But thank you so much to the doctor, as he leaves. Um, you know, something I'm thinking about as well, um, reading or checking out her book, is um, at one time I had a privilege to go to, to Dubai, and I'm checking my notes now here, and I called it The Lessons of Dubai. And one of the things that I wrote here, it says, appreciate and honor your culture. It's the one thing, or it's one of the few things that sets you apart from the world. Appreciate and honor your culture. It's, the one, it's one of the few things that sets you apart from the whole world. Because some of us actually, we've lost our own, we've lost ourselves, we've lost our cultures, you know, and therefore we're just like bonk, you know. But for you being this, it sets you apart from the world. And I pray as well that you may become a, as glorious as Dubai, you know. Uh, come on, you better receive, sister. Come on now. I'm speaking all over your life. <laughs> moving over, moving over, moving over. I'm going to allow uh, Daddy, Daddy to come and speak. Um, Mr. Tulan Zuma. Let's give Daddy a round of applause. Makeba, I'm Bombe, Thank you, all of you who are here this evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to me to stand in front of you uh, in this wonderful gathering. Gipera Namas, Utinga Tini. But then I have to say something on behalf of my daughter, Nandobe. Uh, I have to say uh, my mother-in-law who is amongst us here, Nantos Granny, thank you very much for giving me a wife, a daughter, a daughter, a wife who gave birth to such a person people are talking about. Thank you very much, Kuba, Mapungose. Uh, to all of you, to raise a child like Kunatobe, it wasn't easy. First of all, a child who was out of wedlock. I met my wife, Kunatobe, who was there. She was young, but I was able to raise her, she was able to fit into the family. The Zuma family is a very white and big family, but she was able to adjust and adapt to the teachings and the culture of the family. That is why I'm proud of her today, of her today. Uh, it's been a long way, it wasn't easy, if I, can, if I can relate to the journey we've traveled together, it will be until dawn. But to be short, I know in Tobago we've been through thick and thin, especially your high school level of education, where you were meeting your peers and your peer pressure, but I had to stand, be your father, not that father, but I had to be the father, and you had to be the daughter. Out of you, I didn't expect what I see today. Out of the speeches that I've had today, I didn't expect that one day I'll hear such speeches about you. But God Almighty, the Creator, who knows us before we were even made in our mother's wombs, has made it. It reminds me of the book of Exodus when God appointed Moses. Moses was a boy that was uh, grew without parents, but God could see something out of Moses. When Moses was out in the field looking after livestock, he was a shepherd. 
God had appointed Moses that he is the one who will take the Israelites out of the bondage of the Egyptians. This book is exactly the message that God gave to Moses. When the chairperson of the education portfolio in the case of any legislature was speaking about the type of the children we are, we have to raise nowadays in South Africa, in Africa as a whole. We've got a big challenge of children who don't know their identity, children who don't know their parents, children who don't know where they come from. But I think what we've shown today to us as your parents, it tells each and everyone who is present here, where do you come from? As I've said before, my mother-in-law, she planted this seed. I had to nurture the seed that was already there. I'm proud of you, my mother-in-law. I'm proud of you giving me the, such a woman, my wife, to give such a birth to such a daughter. Mine, I think, was a, an easy job to nurture, though it wasn't easy. With all those weights, I want to say when Moses had to go to Israel, nobody knew him, and even the Israel did not even know God. Moses had to ask God that if Israel asked me, who sent you Moses? What would I say? And God had no other definition except to say, I am who I am. If that was all about God that he had to say. Nothing else to describe God, but he is who he is, nothing else. What we have said today in this book, it tells each and every young, even old, that you must identify, you must find yourself and know your destination as the uh, uh, program director has said. Where are you leading to? What is your vision? What drives you? What is your mission? But today you are saying it in Isisu, the forgotten language. When we go home in the bundles of how we were unborn, we used to go to the field with your dog. Even when it comes home during the holidays, we go to the field and look at my livestock there in the field. And we, she will appreciate the nature, the breathing, the fresh air out of Johannesburg, full of smoke and the mines. And, but there it's fresh in the forest, walking kilometers. And she will say, Dad, I took photos. I want to take them back to Jobe. I want my friends to know where I come from. You have said, guys, she's a loving girl in the family. When she's back during holidays, we feel that love. We feel the warmth when she's in the house. We really appreciate her, her presence, being a member of the family, being, she's in fact, the eldest in the family. The boy that comes after her, I'm sure he has learned a lot from you, Nonto. Continue being the light in the family, in, to the people you meet, in Jopek, in KZN, your friends, you have made all over, you've been traveling, I've been with you, they've said when you were in Zululand, Simunye, you went on up to Sotwana Bay, and that's when you decided, no, enough is enough, working for somebody else. You said, now I'm moving to Johannesburg to discover who I am, and it is what we've done. I'm very much appreciative of you. Guys, without wasting time, I really thank you all for coming here to embrace this wonderful day on behalf of my daughter and the family. You are all wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Nyamala Sebo Mababa. Um, you know, I think it's 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 always great when you hear Abantabatala, you know, honoring you, which means you've made them proud. 
you know, um, unlike some of us, you know, sometimes we don't make our parents as happy as they should be. But this is an opportunity to make the wrong right. There's a song I'm tempted to sing. Is the piano working there? Uh, is, is it working? Yes. Is it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Is there a song you'd like for me to sing for you guys? On behalf of Lon Tobacco? No, guys, I need it. I need it. I really, really. Yeah. This is like Katie okay, Kulman. I have to sing all of my thoughts, guys. I wasn't going to say. My question is, the other story, guys, also, this is a quick one. So, I, I then wanted to sing gospel in London. Eh? And then there was uh, another uh, competition called One Gospel. What? Gospel? Some of you have tried it. Come on, what was it? Some of you are like me, you didn't make it. What was it? With K, K, and I, I want to sing. No, 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 I want to sing gospel. That was too hectic. There was another one. But anyway, so I get there, guys, and then I sing this song, you know. I prayed, by the way, before I walked in, you know. Some of us, you know, guys, we like, we just pray. You think everything will move. You know, and then I get there, and then I start singing. Three churches, they're sitting. Keke was one of them. You know, I get there, and then I start singing with passion and enthusiasm. You know, as I'm singing, Keke is like nodding his head like this. You know, bless his soul, wherever he is. You know, he's nodding his head like this. And then, you know, when someone nods your head, like the, the head, you feel like, I'm powerful now, I should just hit it up. And then I hit another note, and then, my ears come and I'm the button, and then I pulled it down again, and then I maintained it. And then I saw all the two churches, like it was KK and another one, going like, and then I felt like, yeah, you see here, I've done really, really well. I've just nailed it. Then it was time, of course, you know, to say, it's okay. It was three churches, so I needed at least two yeses uh, to go through, you know. So it gets to the first church, the first church says, uh, no. I'm like, oh, okay. In the middle, it's cake, and my guy who know it first, you know. And then it gets to cake, and then, you know, I'm like, and then cake says, mm, my brother, you've got the voice, but uh, mm, not what we're looking for. So it would be a no. I remember the guy's like, the shock made me, I'm like, oh, cake. Cake, ah, oh, come on. Because if I knew cake, and guy, you know, when you're like confident that you can do something, but, but you've got no clue that really it's not something, you know. So I'm tempted to sing. And then, of course, the last child said yes. I thought she was saying yes, just because it was a Christian, you know, show. She needed to massage me, yeah, so I don't feel too bad, you know. But anyways, don't ask me what happened. I'm here, and I'm not an artist. Uh, I'm an author, I'm an entrepreneur, that's who I am. But I'll sing a song before we close. Just for you, I will, trust me. And you guys will enjoy it. I've got a very beautiful voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know the ones that pump their own horns? You must always question them. But anyways, that's the part that I told you that um, we're not going to be too long. Have you been inspired today? Yes. Have you been inspired? Have you been enjoying? Um, have I been at least good? <laughs> Come on, not perfect, but somewhere there. Eh, eh? Give me a cake, a kind of like, you know. You do it, I know what I'm looking for. You know? But anyways, guys, we're going to allow Montobe ever now um, to shine because it's your night. Um, you know, um, and because it's your night, I always say that there's always a prepared place for a prepared somebody, you know, and I think that this place has been prepared for you because you've been preparing yourself. And there's a quote I live by that says, it is better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. I wish you can translate that in Zoom because many people need to hear that. So many people, opportunities are passing them by because they're not prepared. But I want us to stand up, if we may, please and honor the lady of the night. If doctor was still here, she said, uh, doctor said she's the something, something, the wealth of the, actually doctor is a poet as well, you know? So she didn't want to admit like me that age doctor, we tried, but no, it didn't work out. So I want us to honor Nonto Bego and let's welcome her and give her a big round of applause. Yeah, 
time to just pause and think about me and even make an extra effort to come and see me. I honor every speaker. I wanted people that grew up with me. You know, I was a little bit of a man and I was a little bit of a man and I was a little bit of a man and I wanted an opportunity to walk with me from the time I was a child to me now. I felt it's important my dignity, my shadow. All the people that have helped to make this possible, my printers, my dean, my designers, Scoobs, Monte Casino, Debs, thank you for inspiration, for continuously pushing me. I've got a black, white, Indian, and a colored, even a Nigerian mother. I've got mothers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so big up to my mothers all over. Kakula zinjengen kona izanja zemun pagami sanjeniti. Lift up your hands, everybody. Say, I am. I am. I'm the best version of me. I'm the best, best version, version of me. me. There's nobody like me. There's nobody like me. It's only me. And only, me. and only me. Turn your hands around and look at them. Say, hands, yes. you, you are the key, are the key. to where I'm supposed to be. Yes. Allow me, Allow me. To, use you to use you for what God wants me to do. I am unique. And I am very, very special. I am very, very special. Careful, nice. Well, I do that for a living, you know. <laughs> I'm a speaker and I love making people realize how special they are because I am because of the love of God. I'm not going to take you back to everything they've said. Umde Noam has come all the way from KZN. I have one sister in Joburg, Tandega, who's constantly with me, but I'm not going to count you out one by one. No, no, thank you, Selinda, thank you. Thank you so much. Zawa, thank you. Zawashi, thank you. May God continue to prosper us. Tonight, I thought it would be special. If I take you back, can I take you back? Come on. You know, when I wrote this book, something very unusual happened. The Holy Spirit came upon me. I'm a writer. I started writing poetry when I was 23. I'll pick up paper and just write poetry. I'll recite poetry and I wouldn't lose words suddenly. The Lord has made my tongue a ready writer. It's a scripture. It is legit. <laughs> Give a round of applause to the MC. Hasn't it been awesome? So, what figure more? I had started a business, left KZN, and I was down and out, so I was saying, Lord, why am I here? I'm tired of knocking at doors and being rejected. I'm tired of people telling me I'm not good enough. I'm tired of people telling me that I need something to change about myself. I know I have something to offer. I know I have value and I'm tired of them telling me I'm not good enough. Who am I? Ngingubani. Masek Tulum Singh, when the stillness of the night, before the breaking of the morning, comes and you are all alone, who are you? When your cars are parked in the garage, your money's in the bank, your clothes are in your closet. There's no mom, there's no dad. I'm talking about those thoughts that you have with yourself when no one's watching. I'm talking about the real you when no one can hear you talk. That's the person I'm talking about. 
We are tired of you dressing up looking pretty. Anybody can dress up. Nowadays, you can even borrow clothes and even borrow and even lend them and hire for a day. That's how bad we've gone. We don't know what it means to respect an elder. Minamkula was six a kaya kule, Ubuma booze with his cats in Ubona bookies. You must run home. Mamma to Mazanale go with six up women kakui. Namanga. We've wasted too much time blaming skin for our laziness and fear to confront ourselves. Stop running from yourself. This country is the way it is because you refuse to fix yourself and your skeletons. You need to ask yourself, who are you? Why are you here? Where are you headed? What do you want out of life? Can you imagine if each one of us started doing that and you worried about your stuff and your issues, you fixed yourself and you focused on your destiny, there would be no traffic even on the highway. Everybody would be cruising. Probably many of us would have our own private jets and we wouldn't have a problem. It would be normal. Because we'll be living in the fullness and the abundance of what God has put upon us. You were created to lose power. You were born and God said there's an answer. When you were dispatched, he created you. He approved you. Then he dispatched you. There was a word in your hand. Every infant, every child, when they're born, there's a word in their hand. Not even a mother can take it out. God gave each and every one of you a gift. And in my journey of business, I've realized that when we sit with professionals, with everything they have, when we stop and say, but truly, who are you? They don't know. You pride yourself in titles and papers. Walk around with brands on your chest and your shoes, thinking you know when you've got it all. But they got it all about you. Oh, they've got you. And they're making money out of you. I'm going to read for you from the book. Because with love to you. This book, when he came up with it, can you believe that he designed the book? It came in a dream. And these words that are in the book, I didn't think about it. I didn't structure it. He spoke. There's not even a picture of me. The first... So when you read these tunes, Sam, don't think about my shadow. You can't walk in my shadow. We are tired of people walking around idolizing men, expecting them to be perfect for them. When you can't be perfect for your own life, you are miserable, you are broken, you are shattered into pieces. You can't confront yourself, but you expect me to come and glue you. I don't owe you anything. I don't even owe you a smile. You can't smile at yourself, but you feel I owe you a smile. Umubani. Ufunani. Upigelele ipi. Uzuzuza. Who are you? Why are you here? What do you want out of life? Where are you headed? Know yourself. Zazi. Ipendulungumu. You are the answer. Everyone has their pain. I have my share of pain. But I'm telling you, when you go and confront that pain, the butterfly will fly. You will not grow until you deal with your past. And you will not grow until you confront that skeleton. So I'm going to read. And uh, in August, I'm going to have this book interpreted in English. And gradually into all our African languages because God said, you know, there was a day when God challenged me. I often speak to 
groups and governments, private sector, and one day God gave me an audience of blind and deaf people. My mom and dad I witnessed, I was shaking. I said, Ma, how will I confront, how will I speak to blind and deaf people? What will I say? How will I know if they can hear me? And the Lord said, they will feel your heart. They will feel your aura. When you walk in the room, they will feel you. Those who need healing will be healed. Those who need comfort will be comforted. Those who need strengthening will be strengthened. What do people feel when you walk around? Dressed in those expensive clothes, driving those big cars. That is created from the internal state of your being. You don't buy that. It's not found in scent. I'm sorry. You build it. You break. You cry. You crawl. And you want yourself back. Say, I want myself back. I want me now. And I'm going to wait. And to sing a song I created to create an ambience so you can hear what I'm going to read for you. Young Tandu Jays. I want you to go with me before I read the book for you, okay? In Jabulo, in Jabulo, no good to lie my in Jabulo, in Jabulo, no good to lie. In Jabulo, in Jabulo, no good to lie, my head. In Jabulo, in Jabulo, no good to lie. to hear. 
hear what God is saying to you. Gingo ba? Kumbaga ang kegut sinse. Abadulayo na babonayo ba si umile ganto suhan ba minya ga mining? Iko kada mzuzunyo wado ho. Is kati siya ha mitizi siya ang amal. Obonayo si umile. Ganti mi kaba ang wiki chima ga mizuzi pendo ga mahori si tsubu na minya. Kwenye si mwa kasi chuli yi. Zi sabalele zi ngabanya zi kongawa. Zi kupegi sa mozo zonke yi zi ngawa. Enya gato. Empuma lang. Enjona lang. Nase ningizi. Imi kaba ng misha ni midahal. Uya zula zula wote obo na yu ti umi la wote. Agunjalo jeno maj. Is in your mind racing? Gibe itu uba ngi kujele go hambo resi tu nzi sami. Kesaba yu sifika. Kesaba yu finelele bute na sek chule ngu kutuwa la wasu. Gia valega ngi akash. Gia funa ngi azula zula. Kuso zonge izi ngalo. Gia bolega ngi afanisi. Gili nanisi ngi lungizi. Gi katanisi ngi zangi kelele panzi. Gi pege panzi gi pege kele. Emu uva na pambi. Angi finyele. Uti wa angane. How many times have you been told you're not enough?
there's chaos because we all want to look like Beyonce. Beyonce is doing her own thing. We need someone to challenge her to do their own thing in their own way to be themselves and fulfill and inspire Beyonce. She needs somebody to inspire her. Jay Z needs somebody to motivate him. You walking around here wearing Tom Ford, you don't even know how old that man is. Young school, we start to respond to the sun, but we see a shame. Shame on you that you think that you have it all in control because you are wearing names that you, you pride yourself in pronouncing. You take months pronouncing them, but you can't pronounce. You pride yourself that your kids go to a multiracial private school, but you yourself can pronounce half of the Zulu words and you think you accomplished. Shame on you. We need leaders who know themselves. You can't lead a nation when you, you are busy getting people lost even more because you are entangled in your own skeletons of emptiness and vanity and death. We are tired of you dressing up and standing up on podiums because of a piece of paper, but you lack character and values. We want character. We want to walk away with a woman and a man of integrity. But when they say, I don't stand by this principle, when they turn around, they don't stand by that principle. Yeah. When the robot is red and no one's watching, do you cross now? It's your own heart that knows. We need that level of integrity. We need that honor to come back to Africa. Africa has no common vision because we keep wanting other people to write our vision for us. They came, there's a part in the book where I say, Basulema zwena boba zwabone gama zwa kusi. Delo wazi kutu babona ninga boni je. Oh hey, lafa ili shega kul. Besi, si bonele si hizolo lo. Namisha nesi inkeli sa mshaba wong. Gena yogu ta sazi. If people want to try and sell a cheap meat, guess where they take it? To Africa. Oh my, it was packaged at Woolworths. Shame on you. Ushiro and Kukiagi ne kute ne huchani koku has i oken ni kufunyala wulwet. I was a wulweti fitan. Shame on you. You wanna eat? You want to eat um, food that's served uh, at Michelangelo and pop a bottle of champagne? Ushiro and Kukiagi. 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 Shame on you. He said, I speak French, I speak Portuguese. You can't speak Kosa and Swahili. Shame. Kosa and Swahili, you tell me, I can, I'm an interpreter in French and, and uh, I can use German too. Wow. Do, they, do you think they care if you come and interpret in German? Do you think they come home and tell your mom you interpreted their lecture in German? Guess how proud your mom would be when they, the Germans come and say, Oh my, she wrote her thesis in Corsa. Why not you give that man a round of applause? That was the point. You've allowed systems to dictate for you what you can and cannot do. You've allowed processes, input. You've allowed the process to be you. You even eat sausages that are processed and you pride yourself. Fresh when you are dead, you pay me to try to go above. I'll leave it to me. Now, look at the meat, it don't be so shame. My sisters, my brother, this book is talking about you a process of growth and character. Finding. I've been in the space of leadership development and training for six years now. I coach executive people from one-on-one -on -one sessions to group sessions. People from different areas in the world, even here in Africa. It's humbling, but it's also very scary and disappointing to witness people dressed up in white collars. When you ask them, he mumbles and pulls out his card. He has no clue who he is. He can only associate himself with the tag. I just want to have a conversation with you. Not, not with your title. It's just with you. Your state of being. 
You know, when you wake up in the morning, that person, when they haven't bathed and haven't taken that bottle of expensive perfume and soap, when I don't know what to do, I do you even remember what you looked like? You know, in some of the sessions I've had, I've had women find themselves that they left themselves at the age of 10. We walk with her back in her mind, back to the time when she last saw herself and accepted herself as she was 10 years old. And at that time, I'm, I'm dealing with them at 50. But that is just in case you don't find yourself. The backup plan is your degree, dearest and dears. Your degree is your backup plan. The original plan is the you with the purpose and the calling of God. That's, that's what we're here for. That's what we specialize in. We specialize in the you defined, the you ink, Mr. Mukasa. We want you, the you PTYLTD. The you, you, what value do you add in an organization when you walk in? What do people know about you? No, she's very good with emotional intelligence. When you tell her your issues, she's able to dissect your problem and quickly give you a solution. We're not talking about the profession. We're talking about your ability. Naturally. To so just dissect a problem. How do you and to Let's look at the stats, uh, the previous years, what happened? What were the challenges that we were faced with? Uh, you just... You say, no, maybe this is funny, no one's in Go tando. You know, when devs ask me, where are you on the book? I said, devs. And she said, you should thank somebody. And I said, this is about God talking to his children. When you get this book, I want you to see you and your father having a real conversation. Some of you guys are making excuses saying, ah, Swallow that. For those that never came to apologize to you, I apologize on their behalf in the book and I say, Carry on. Can you start life again now? Can you get over that now? We all stumble and fall, but we don't stop. We push. And when we push, we, we have so many other stumbling blocks, but we overcome. I'm going to read this poem, which is at the back of the book. And when I finished writing this poem, I cried. I didn't realize what this was until it was done. This is a message, a mercy call to this continent. Repent from your evil ways. Purify your hearts. Not all of you will hear, and it's okay. But the words that I speak to you will come back one day and you wish that you had them fresh again. Buya, Dwana Buya, Ubuye Lekaya, Musugulibala, Sugulibala, Buye Lekaya. Ziakala ziakala is manazikababa. Zitugila zila shoe iti yaba ubo. Kanti sanzani uma sila shaba giti. Ubaba wata la izu luno shaba uguza sitandani sizwane sazani. Wozani wozani. Buyani yekaya. Sinimene siyakalaza. Buyani yekaya. Ubaba usimu sine wati ya sitandani. Mozimbo wale nga inti na pala na ikazi. Na pala na ikazi, na pala na ikazi. Nisusa wonge obe kusuga nisa. Wozani, wozani. Mwiyani ekaya. Si indlegi sasa zani. Kota si mwende no wote. Wozani, wozani. Mwiyani ekaya. Si musenele utani. Si lungi sama puti. Si sulezi nyembezi. Sibuyi sene ya mazu ya shabayo. Mozani, mozani. Muyani ikaye. Sinimene siyakalaza. Muyani ikaye. I'm available for a signed copy. Thank you for coming.